stuck. Party. Wait, wait, wait. Stop the movie. Why is a skateboarding, guitar playing, cute girl dating 17 year old friends with an AARP card carrying, plutonium stealing, flux capacitor creating crackpot scientist? Does no one else find it slightly odd that they're meeting in an empty mall parking lot at 1.15 in the morning? I mean, this isn't your normal high school friendship. They don't copy each other's biology homework. They don't complain about girls. They don't go to movies on Friday nights. No, Marty McFly and Dr. Emmett Brown have more of a bros don't let bros steal plutonium from Liberty and nationalist kind of thing going on. Doc, you don't just walk into a store and, and buy plutonium. John Mulaney hilariously pointed this out in his Netflix special, The Comeback Kid. Who's his best friend? A disgraced nuclear physicist. All right, proceed. And he's right. It's a little fucking weird. Not quite your mom having the hots for you weird, but just weird. Bob Gale, the film's co-writer and co-creator of the entire Back to the Future universe, gave us his reason for Doc and Marty's friendship back in 2011. For years, Marty was told that Doc Brown was dangerous, a crackpot, a lunatic. So being a red-blooded American teenage boy, aged 13 or 14, he decided to find out just why this guy was so dangerous. Marty snuck into Doc's lab and was fascinated by all the cool stuff that was there. When Doc found him there, he was delighted to find that Marty thought he was cool and accepted him for what he was. 13 or 14 years old? Bob, you made it weirder. First off, pick a year. Was he 13 or was he 14? This is your universe. There's no reason to be vague. And what cool stuff was Marty fascinated by? A room full of clocks? An automated can opener? An overpowered speaker that almost killed him? At face value, Marty seems like a pretty cool kid. As I mentioned before, he's in a band, he can skateboard, he plays guitar, and he has an attractive girlfriend. But what other friends does Marty have? In fact, what friends does Marty make over the course of three movies? We see him with this band, but there doesn't seem to be any camaraderie amongst him and any of the other pinheads. In the future, he still seems like a loner who's kind of stepped on by all of his superiors. And in the Wild West, his only friends are his ancestors, who suspiciously look a lot like him. And don't get me started on his incredibly depressing family life. His dad's a pushover and his mom's an overbearing alcoholic. But what does Marty truly love? Music. The franchise starts with Marty getting blown away 30 feet by a speaker. He brainwashes his father with heavy metal music, and he lives his dream of performing at the high school dance by playing Johnny B. Good. When we first encounter Doc Brown in the past on November 5th, 1955, you might not notice a saxophone hanging in the background of his workshop. So let's say Bob Gale is right. They met innocently early in the 1980s, two loners who want so much more from life, bond over their mutual love for music. One stuck with the shitty home life, trying to grasp his future. The other, a disgraced scientist, struggling with the constant failures of his past. It's innocent enough, but still something just doesn't quite add up. Which brings me to my next theory. What else do slacker teenagers love? Sleep. Marty is constantly sleeping or passed out or knocked unconscious over the course of the trilogy. And every time he wakes up, he's very confused and disoriented. But like most slackers, Marty is a kid with big dreams. Getting signed by the record company, taking Jennifer up to the lake. And maybe, possibly, of time traveling with an imaginary best friend who can fix all the problems in his life. Maybe Marty McFly is a lucid dreamer. It's all a dream. It's just a very intense dream. And he dreams up the time traveling DeLorean. And he dreams up the good, kind, and loyal friend. And it makes sense because he's in desperate need of one. Someone or something to make the pain go away. His Oedipus complex with his mom? Subconscious. His triumphant strut across the Hill Valley High School auditorium stage? Pure aspirational imagination. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. How else do you explain Mr. Strickland never aging? Well, it's either that or... Marty met Doc innocently, as writer Bob Gale said, around the age of 13 or 14, and he's been hanging around Doc's workshop for three to four years, and somehow never noticed or heard Doc talk about his 30-year mission of building a time machine? Are you kidding me? In all of this time, around his best bud, Marty never heard one mention of an infamous flux capacitor? Never once saw a DeLorean? Are we really supposed to believe that the inquisitive Marty McFly never asked Doc what he was working on? Or that Doc Brown wouldn't tell his only friend that he invented time travel? I call bullshit. Marty McFly is asleep, 
dreaming of sweet Huey Lewis in the news tunes, time traveling in a dope DeLorean with his kooky best friend Doc Brown, fixing the past in an attempt to make his actual real life lonely present slightly more tolerable. Too dark? Okay. Well, let me go back and touch on that whole thing with Marty and his mom for one second.